welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you are stopping by for another video, thank you so much for returning. If you are new here, I'm Faye, I'm 31, and I am a second year adult nursing student, and I'm also autistic. I make videos all the time on my nursing school journey, life as an autistic woman, and general lifestyle videos as well. If you do like these kinds of videos, please do go ahead and hit the subscribe button before we get started so that you don't miss any more uploads. So today, I'm doing a study with me video showing you guys how I take notes in anatomy, physiology, pathophysiology, and pharmacology. I know that sounds like a lot of subjects, but they are all interlinked, so it does make sense to learn them together. This video will help all students, not just nursing students, as hopefully you'll be able to pick up some helpful tips and tricks along the way. So, let's get started. Before I even sit down to study, I like to make sure that my study area is clean, free of clutter and cosy. This helps to keep me focused and less likely to be distracted. I also like to set the mood just before I study, working with a candle on that has a nice scent to it. I'm wearing comfortable clothes such as a hoodie and leggings are essential for me to study peacefully. I also like to bring up my water in my hydro jug. I have this because it's 2.2 litre so it holds a lot of water so it stops me from having to go back up and downstairs to refill it. Water is super important when you're studying. I also have my coffee which I have actually already part drank um, but I like to get this on my desk for a little energy boost and snacks as well. I don't really like to have big full heavy meals when I'm studying because it tends to make me tired so I just keep little snacks like this nearby. I've not long had my lunch so that will do me until later. A few extra tips that I have for you guys is I like to wear something in my ears just to block out any excess sounds to eliminate any further distractions. These are my Karma Pro which if you've been here before will see that I use all the time and they just sit in your ears like that. I have my blue light glasses on because of my laptop time. And I will be studying today by the method of Pomodoro. For those who don't know that, it's to study in small bursts and have breaks in between. So I'm gonna set my alarm timer for 25 minutes and then have a 10 minute break and then come back for another 25 minutes and then I'm gonna finish my studying for the day. I've recently found this little app called Focus Dog and basically you set your timer on it. So I'm gonna set mine at 25 minutes and when you press start it will start the timer and you're not to touch your phone you're not to close the app and the cute little incentive is there's a little dog that you look after and you earn donuts as a reward so that you can feed your little furry friend and finally as a setup i've mentioned this before i know a lot of people like to listen to music as they study which is absolutely fine you like to listen to music put music on but i actually find that distracts me so what i tend to find is if i put a film on that i know word for word then there's background noise going on but it's not enough to take my concentration away because I already know the film. So I'm just going to put that on and open a new tab. So first up, today I am learning about urology so I go into the powerpoints that I've had set from my university from the lectures that we've had and I just run through these and as I run through them I take notes. When I take my notes, I like to have them colour coordinated by using lots of different coloured pens. So for urology today, I'm going to do them in orange. So I will take any orange shade. And use a combination of a Sharpie S note, a Stabilo highlighter, and a good old big crystal pen. So I go through my notes for my lecture because this just refreshes everything that we've been taught and gets me ready to learn more A and P. As I go through, I like to keep this by my side, which is Dictionary for Nurses and Healthcare Workers, and it has so much helpful information in there. So as I'm reading through my notes, if there are words that I don't understand, that really helps to break down the jargon. line paper when I take my notes from my lectures and this is just because most of them are bullet points and it just makes it easier for me to read and 
quickly filter through all the stuff that we've already learned. It's just basically to refresh my mind so that I'm ready for anatomy and physiology. So after I've done my lecture notes, I then move on to understanding the anatomy and physiology of that particular body system that I'm working on, which today is the urinary system. I have this book, which is Understanding Anatomy and Physiology in Nursing, and honestly, one of the best books I've ever come across. Really, really simple to understand. It's laid out really aesthetically pleasing, it's easy to digest, and it's in small chunks. I like to do my anatomy and physiology and patho and farm studying on plain paper and this is just because with me writing it in my own way instead of copying notes off a laptop I am able to do diagrams if I need and I just find it easier to do it on plain paper. and physiology is I go through the body system that I am working on and literally just turn it into my own notes. I pick out the key things that I think will stick in my head, write them in my own words and then I go back through notes and I highlight even more important things that stand out to me. And the reason that I do a &P first is because obviously pharmacology and pathophysiology are a little bit more complex and with pharmacology it's drugs. So these are potentially very dangerous drugs that we give our patients and the last thing I want to be doing is handing drugs out willy-nilly to anybody without actually properly knowing what the consequences could be if it mixes with another drug or if they've got any allergies. So many things that can go wrong and so personally I would like to know the body systems as well as I can and understand them the best that I can so that when it does come to the pharmacology and pathophysiology of these systems I know my stuff. My notes end up looking a little something like that. I have diagrams on here sometimes as well because I am a visual learner as well as a kinetic learner. If you don't know what type of learner you are, I really suggest that you have a look into that because it will benefit you massively. my legs, gone to the toilet and I'm ready to get back up with things because I don't want to be doing this more than the next 25 minutes and that is to get through the pharmacology side of it. If you want me to do a separate detailed study with me just for pharmacology please do let me know in the section below because I know it's quite complex. Before I do move on to pharmacology I'm just going to show you how I do file away all of my notes. So I have separate binders like this one, it has anatomy and physiology on it, so the last time I did anatomy and physiology was the cardiovascular system and these are my notes from the last time I studied, as you can see, very bright, very colourful diagrams and keeping with the blue theme, colour coded as I said before, so I'm just going to get some of these wallets literally just put the notes that I've done today into that section and I do the exact same with a pathophysiology folder that I've got so I have a, another ring binder like this um, a different colour and it says pathophysiology on it and again it is split into the body systems. I love to learn pharmacology and I know that's not something many people say but that's because I've got such a simple system I think to help me learn. Firstly I have this it's a drug formulary. So we were kind enough that our university gave us a printout that we could um, keep and photocopy as many times as we like. I have drug information, which is the drug category, and the chemical name, generic name. So I'll, I will go through all this with you in a minute, but brand name, indication, how common is it prescribed, reasons for the prescription, dosage and route of administration, precautions, contraindications, allergies, Everything, possible side effects, drug interactions and additional notes, anything else that you need to put on there. Everything you need to know for each individual drug, you can put it all on here. 
So for example, today I am gonna go through amlodipine with you. This is one that I've already done. I will quickly talk you through this and then I will do a new one. First, I would not be able to complete any of these drug formularies without this little beauty. I'm sure we got given this for free when we started university, but this is my Bible. If you don't like books, you can get apps online, um, but I am a book girl, so I'm all about this. Amlodipine, for example, is an anti-angina drug. Drugs for heart and circulation. So if we come into this section here, if we come to this section at the beginning of this book, drugs that treat heart and circulation problems. So it has everything in here. It's got your beta blockers, it's got your diuretics, you've got your vasodilators, and it just breaks down what they are, what they do, and anti-angina there. Okay, so it tells you about what anti-angina drugs are, what they're used for, how they work, and you come to this little section. So this section breaks down the common drugs that are used as anti-angina drugs. So one of the calcium channel blockers is amlodipine, which is in alphabetical order. Yeah, amlodipine. This will then break down all the information you could possibly want to know about amlodipine. It's got the general information, information for the users, so how to frequency and time of doses, adult dosage range, onset of effect, it's got duration of action, everything you need to know, all the side effects, X, Y, and Z, is in here. But using the information that I found in the drug guide, I will then go to, for example, drug information, the drug category. So amlodipine is an anti-angina drug, it's an antihypertensive, and it's a calcium channel blocker. Simple. For those who don't understand what I mean by brand name, so for example, if you're doing about ibuprofen, then in a, here, brand name would be Neurofen, for example. The reason for prescription, any circumstances, ages that can take it and so on. So adults can have it for angina and high blood pressure. So precautions, contraindications, allergies, long-term liver problems, heart failure, aortic stenosis, diabetes, and other meds. So it goes on and on and on and on. And as you can see, it literally is so self-explanatory. Self -explanatory. It's all set out into sections for you just to make it easy. I won't bore you with every single thing that I've written on there, but you do get the idea, I hope. I've also followed the same trend in here for keeping colour coordinated. So my anti-angina drugs I've kept in this grey colour. As you can see, they're all grouped together. On opioid and NSAIDs are all in red. Uh, my diuretics are in blue. Another diuretic. And so on. So that just about wraps up the study session and study with me video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If there's any more detail you want me to go into in a completely separate video, please let me know in the description box below. Make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss any more uploads and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.